Okay. I think we're... <clears throat> I think we're going live. <clears throat> I, um, I don't know, video, it's telling me that, that it's not maintaining smooth streaming. So hopefully, um, hopefully it's no big deal that it um, will sort itself out. We did have some big thunderstorms here last night, which interrupted the internet a little. Um, but it seemed to be okay this morning, so I guess we'll wait and see. <laughs> if um, any dramas happen, then I'll just put the recording up and recording it as, as we go to. So, it's... Uh, the 15th of January, we're like halfway through the first month of the year. I'm not really sure where the first two weeks have gone. Uh, time flies, whether you're having fun or not, I think. Uh, we'll just wait another moment or two. It's um, much cooler here today. It was 37 degrees here yesterday. I think it's supposed to warm up to much the same a bit later but this morning it seems to be not too bad and the sparrows are singing and there's lots of baby galahs in the backyard so there'll be lots of bird noises peppermint tea so I hope you've got something that you can sip on as we go And um, I think I might make a start, eh? I've been itching to get back to this little fella. I'm really enjoying <clears throat> playing around with him. So what I think we'll do today is work first, firstly around the eye here to do all of that sort of work around here. And if we get to the top of the head and ear area. So I can see that the video is buffering. I hope that it's um, going to sort out soon enough. I, I'm using Wi-Fi in my studio. I think I'm going to have to get somebody to come out and put some cabling in um, and see if that makes a difference. Rightio. I think we have put a little bit of base layer down before but I want to put some more down now to make sure it's all well covered. Um, and while we've got some nice blue colours happening in here, some cool colours, there's a lot of warm colours around the outside. So I'm going to take warm grey one, not very sharpy, which is fine, because I just want to get a nice base down. So I'm working sort of circular motions. Roughly in the way that the hair grows. Uh, and I'm going outside of the area of, that I am working on at the moment. So let me know if you can hear and see okay, type a message in if um you can do that that would be grand and uh, let me know how you're going how are things in your neck of the woods in this very strange world we seem to live in these days okay so what I might do now is I'm just trying to decide which way to go first um, I might take down which could use a bit of a sharp and I really should have done all that before I came on here but I'm it's early it's seven but I did do a little bit of work already this morning um, my piece for the changeling auction coming up um, and it's actually going to be a little lemur too it's a uh, let me see if I can put it in here and show you Yeah, it's going to be a little lemur that's part fern, part um, forest creature. So I was playing with that one this morning for a little bit as well. So I'm totally in the lemur zone at the moment. Um, what I might actually do is grab the embossing tool. 
inside this really dark area of like it's like a brow area same as what we did over here we put a few little lines in there looking at the way that the light the grows in that section So I've got a fan on in the background too because it's quite warm in here so hopefully that's not too distracting. And then I'm going to bring some dark over the top, dark sepia. And I'm working really lightly. I'm just looking at the reference and making sure I get the shape right. And you can already see that the light areas that I've done the embossing with are showing through. I am working in like a hair stroke motion. And now sort of looking around and seeing where this really dark brown goes as well. And it's just that process of building up the layers. I think it needs a little bit of um, pink. So I've got Caput Morton Violet, which get, again is exactly the same as what we did over here. Bring a little bit of that in, and we'll also bring some Delft Blue in. That really nice shadow colour. <clears throat> constantly looking at the shapes of the colour that I've got in my hand and seeing where it fits in, how it fits in. A little bit more dark sepia up here now. Not pressing hard, it's a layer, so. Take your time. So the Coel. We haven't um, had as many loud visits from the Coel, but yesterday I saw a male and a female up in the tree. <clears throat> in the future noises, I've come to the conclusion. There was a um, wattle bird nearby as well, and also a male coel. So I'm wondering whether there was actually two fledglings, a, a male and a female, and the wattle bird was the surrogate. Um, but they seemed very well. Continuing on the um, familial relations of the coel in this area. <laughs> So yeah, I think the adults have gone back to Papua or Indonesia, far north Queensland, wherever they've come from. And we've got some babies hanging around now. We've also got a lot of baby galahs at the moment too, which is quite late in the season. We usually see a lot more of them earlier. But we've had a strange sort of January already. It's been quite a cool summer compared to usual summer antics. Um, that's not to say that it won't get crazy hot again now because January and February tend to be our hottest months. So I've got the embossing tool. <clears throat> I've got the Delft Blue in my hand which is making me want to do a bit more of this nose area. Um, and there's quite a lot of, actually I didn't finish that did I? There's quite a lot of lightness here so um, I'm going to take the, <laughs> I've now got an embossing tool and two pencils in my hand. Um, cold grey one and lay a base layer of that down It'll meet up with that warmer grey and I'm not necessarily going to go down and do all of the rest of the nose here but I want to finish off around this eye so 
that requires a bit of coming in that way. And a sip of tea. Um, right, I'm going to do a little bit of embossing this way. lost in all my purpliness. Um, okay, let's get I'm going to go for a bit of a warm grey actually. I'm going to go for warm grey 4 and it's it's quite like it's a bit too, a bit warm all the way up the middle of the nose here. Might add a little bit of pink to that as well, the cap at Morton. Just a little bit. bring a bit more of that out here too. So yeah we're just building up the layers slowly. <clears throat> All right I've got cold grey 2 now. I'm coming over the cold grey one and the delft blue that we've put down. Doing sort of longer fur strokes. That makes a difference already, doesn't it? Giving that little bit of um, connection between the eyes. Now we've got a bit of connection happening. Um, and take Delft Blue back again and just do a little bit more along the nose. And we'll come back and work on the nose, this sort of cheek and nose area later. But I just want to get a nice base down so that we've got some context as we're looking between the two. Mortem again. I'm just going to put a little bit on this side as well. Radio. Let's get a bit of uh, burnt ochre, I think. So we've got some of that coming down here, and then there's a really light amount of it around this eyebrow area. Just really faint, working really lightly. And we can start to get a bit of the base color around the edge of the eye happening. Again, that'll just give us a bit of context as we move around. I 
It's kind of a bit greeny sort of down here, so we might use some raw umber. And definitely some burnt umber around the edges here. That yellowy warm brown. So that's just very light. Um, I do want to take the embossing tool again and sort of look at some of the hairs around the edge here. I don't want like lots and I'm not pressing hard but there's some definite really light spots in there and we can always go back and really pull out some highlights in there. This just allows us to have a bit more of that fur texture. Uh, in a quicker way. a bit of a light a shading of burnt umber around the outside here right let's get our burnt umber which is getting smaller and smaller Working a light layer of the brown in. see that that stream is really struggling which is so annoying right let's go up in warm greys so I'm going to take, what am I going to take? I think I'm going to go warm grey three. Let me get a little bit more of this um, darker tone. We've got, it's quite light in just one area there. The rest is quite dark, really. How about some browns? So let's get Bista. I'm 
build up all these layers of hair Just a whole bunch of extra depth and dimension. Um, it's a little bit of magic. Walnut brown, and just inside in the inside part of the eye area, and a little bit more warmth, a bit more embossing in here. Embossing at any time that you want to keep some of the previous layer, whether that's a light layer or not like the lightest layer or not um, just to provide a bit more texture Look at you. Bring a little bit of it in down the bottom here. Some warm colours coming in here. Warm tones. And then the rest is really more that yellowy colour. Do a little bit of warm, ready walnut brown up here alright I'm going to go for a bit of nougat now and really bring in more of that sort of furry texture so fur lines short sharp or long depending on what's going on in the reference there and I really should sharpen this up a little bit this one and there's little bits of it on the outside of the eye the inner eye here as well too coming along see it's just the slow layers and you keep persevering keep pers persisting and um, and you know it starts to coalesce and come together and look like what it is that you're trying to achieve and if it's not then you just keep going until it does I'm 
Okay. I want a nice dark grey, a really dark grey. I think I'm actually going to go for cold grey six. I also think I want a bit more black inside this eye area here. But we'll start with cold grey. This area needs to be darkened up quite a bit. <laughs> That's a Corella telling a lorikeet to bugger off. Can you see the difference adding dark? really helps everything else to stand out a bit more so it's really important that you get the right amount of darks down and if you look at the two eyes they're quite different in the reference so this one's got a lot more dark around it than this one this side's much more in the light so you just keep those things in mind because it's those little things that help to make it look uh, really realistic Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of this up into this dark area up here, but we need a lot more brown in there yet as well. See how slow the connection is. I think that I might delay any other further lives until I can get a cable put in here. Because it's frustrating for you as well. don't have the best internet here it's ridiculous ridiculous okay now I've got burnt umber again been a big week. <laughs> we get to Friday and oh, it's exhausting. I think we all have news fatigue as well. There's so much going on in the world. Um, as well as, you know, pandemic fatigue. and all of the dramas associated with that even if you're not direct the fear and concern and grief and everything around it affects us all so this eye is really much different to the other one much darker of a darker grey again so I've got four I think if I got here yeah dark grey four uh warm grey four
Oh, sweet little face. Thank goodness for pencils and paper is all I can say. That's what keeps me sane. It's all about just working slowly and building those layers up and I think we're getting there around the eye there I think that that's working well what I wouldn't mind doing is getting some of this orange in oops so I want to lay down what am I going to lay down there I think I'm going to lay down I can't remember what I did over here but I'm going to use ivory anyway And as it comes down in here, it's really dark. Looks a bit funny, doesn't it? Let's get some burnt ochre, which is going to be our primary colour in here. And it probably doesn't look markedly different on the computer, um, on the screen, as the burnt umber, but there is a shift and it's all about the layers. So. These will just get all built up over the course. The look always looks a bit scratchy to start off with because you you know you only got one layer down it, it's there's not enough information there we're not made up of one layer but it's important not to just color the whole thing um, to to have those hair textures because you're letting little bits of the co other colors shine through all right let's get some Dark Naples Ochre, which is that yellowy, uh, golden yellowy sort of colour, and it works beautifully with the oranges. Really makes them pop out, and particularly down this middle section here is quite yellow. So again, I'm doing fur strokes. And there's lots of darkness from this area here coming in to the orangey section as well. So bring a bit of that in there. I 
these pencil holders are much nicer than the other ones so I might have to order some more of those a little bit more expensive but they make the experience much nicer Alright, let's come back with another layer of the Burnt Sienna. And you get into the habit after a while of really you, your eye is much more on your reference than it is on your paper. So that's what's important to have your reference in an area where it's not going to cause you too much grief to look up and down or sideways. You don't want a lot of extra head movements because that will wear you and your neck out. Um, so I find having my iPad directly above, it's right here, um, really helpful. Or you could have a printout right in front of you above or beside, either or. This is, is really, really super light. There. Um, and we might bring in some warm grey or coal grey, probably coal grey one as well when we get to around to doing the ear there but I just want to put a bit of base in there so that I can use the slice tool if I need to and scrape back in a bit You see that the layers are starting to build up now, getting a bit more depth happening. Alright, let's go back to some burnt ochre. A lot more darkness in here yet. That's coming along. Oh, 
and bring a lot of that burnt sienna down into this really dark area um, and then we'll come back in with some more darkness as well pretty boy. I've got a bit of burnt ochre again now. It's getting pretty close. Again, I'm just bringing some of that down and around here and let's come back in with some dark sepia I think let's do proper dark bring some dark up into here as well and I want to bring a little bit more of it over this way nice sharp pencil Okay, what do you think? Oh, I'm really happy with how he's progressing along. Oh, such a sweet little... I might just put some of these eyebrows in. So it's, with eyebrows, it's with whiskers and, and um, those sorts of things, it's all about committing. <laughs> and trying to flick away but keeping your eye on the direction and having a nice sharp pencil Okay, so next one, have a good weekend, take care.